Hi, my name is Chris Nowinski. I'm a husband to my wife, Nicole, and a father to our two amazing children, Kenzie and Charlie. I'm also a neuroscientist working to help cure CTE, the degenerative brain disease that has devastated so many great athletes and veterans in their final years, including one of my teammates. I lead an organization called the Concussion Legacy Foundation. We support patients and families struggling with brain trauma symptoms and remind them every day that there is hope. We know CTE and most concussions are entirely preventable, so we're dedicated to reducing the repetitive head impacts that cause them. I know firsthand how painful the effects of brain trauma can be. I was a defensive tackle at Harvard where I earned all Ivy honors by too often leading with my head. Sometimes I got my bell rung, but I never said anything. Why would you? Now I know those were concussions. After I graduated, I decided I wanted to step into a new arena. Yes, I was the first person to apply my hard-earned Harvard degree to the art of professional wrestling in the WWE. I got to tell you, it was awesome. I had so much fun playing bad guy Chris Harvard until a match in 2003 where I was actually kicked in the head and suffered a concussion so severe, I never returned to the ring. In my journey to try to fix my brain, I found Dr. Robert Cantu, who changed everything I knew about concussions. I had never learned the signs and symptoms of a concussion or how important it was to rest after brain injury. I damaged my brain out of sheer ignorance, but I wasn't alone. Back in 2003, no athletes knew. If an NFL player was knocked unconscious, when he woke up, he'd go right back in, and ESPN would celebrate. And Jesse Chapman got jacked up. <laughs> I felt like I was in on a secret that could help a lot of people. I had to find a way to bring this information to the public and change how concussions were understood and handled in sports. Dr. Cantu also taught me that it wasn't just about concussions. There was a disease called chronic traumatic encephalopathy. CTE that used to be called punch drunk because it was only studied in boxers, but now it was being found in NFL players. We needed to figure out what was happening. I also realized CTE would be the way we could get people to take concussions seriously. I got injured at the right time, in which the first two NFL players were studied for this disease, and it turned out they both had it. And I thought people would make a big deal out of it, but shockingly, even when the first two cases came in positive, there was never a national news story about this, what's going on in football with these cases of CTE. So one day in November 2006, I opened the newspaper to find out former Philadelphia Eagles strong safety Andre Waters took his life. I wondered if he had CTE too, so I called his mother and convinced her to donate his brain for research. It turned out he did have CTE. Okay, we have three of three NFL players here. Maybe this needs to get a little bit more serious. Maybe something's happening here. I knew I needed to formalize this research because CTE can only be diagnosed after death by looking at the brain. So I teamed up with Dr. Cantu and we co-founded the Concussion Legacy Foundation. From there, we needed to find a scientist who was willing to blaze a new trail and create the first academic research program in the world focused on CTE. I found the ideal collaborator in the brilliant and courageous Dr. Anne McKee, and she convinced Boston University School of Medicine and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs to partner with us to create the Unite Brain Bank. That was 2008. More than 1,500 brains later, Unite researchers have discovered the first cases of CT in athletes who played soccer, ice hockey, mixed martial arts, baseball, and now college and high school football players. We're studying CT in military veterans, boxers, rugby players, and victims of domestic violence. We're now diagnosing CT in female athletes who die in their 20s. We're seeing CT in young men who die as teenagers. These discoveries put CTE on the map and convince the world there are long-term consequences to concussions. Now we're trying to change the culture for the next generation of athletes. We've launched education programs to teach coaches and athletes how to recognize and respond to concussions. Alongside Bob Costas, we're training members of the media how to report on the injury so children watching at home understand how serious it is. To get us one step closer to a cure for CT, 
We built a culture of brain donation in sports, recruiting top athletes to pledge to donate their brain to science. NASCAR's most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr., announcing he's planning on donating his brain for concussion research. After she dies, the three-time Olympian pledges to donate her brain for concussion research. Then, to create change even faster, we went global. We couldn't be more proud to have Stephen Thompson as the first athlete to pledge his brain to the Concussion Legacy Project here at Oxford University. I realized we needed to get the best scientists around the world to join the fight to NCTE. So I launched the CLF Global Brain Bank and recruited scientists in Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, Brazil, and Canada who have now diagnosed some of the most famous athletes in the world with CTE. And our chapters are advocating for prevention and reforms in global sports like soccer and rugby. Flag rugby, uh, AFL, those work for kids. And the question is, when do you start exposing them to the most dangerous part of the game? It also became clear that more needed to be done to diagnose and treat brain trauma in the military. We began a concerted effort to provide brain health resources to veterans and launched Project Enlist to encourage veteran brain donation so scientists could better understand service-related traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, and CTE. Since 2019, we've helped more than 6,000 patients and caregivers through the CLF Helpline. We host support groups, facilitate one-on-one -on -one peer connections, provide education, and offer recommendations to trusted doctors who have the specialized training to treat persistent concussion symptoms and suspected CTE. And we're just getting started. We're working every day to end CTE, recruiting for clinical research studies aimed at diagnosing CT during life, developing effective treatments for symptoms, and one day, we hope, a cure. But we can't do it alone. We need you on our team. We invite you to join us in the fight for a world without CTE and concussion safety without compromise. Sign up for clinical research, pledge to donate your brain, Share the CLF helpline when you learn someone is struggling. Encourage people to stop hitting kids in the head. And donate today so we can keep athletes safe, advance a cure for CTE, and continue to provide life-changing support for patients and families when they need us the most. Let's work together and let's work quickly. I need to make sure my kids have a safer sports experience than I did. And I can't lose more former teammates and friends to CTE. I can't.